Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of two books, Etiquette, The Least You Need to Know and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. For those inquiring about my books, my books are only available in hard copy print, like this, in English language here in Azerbaijan. If you want to order a signed copy, please email me, I'll link it down below here, as well in the description box down below. If you're a new viewer on my channel, I talk about etiquette, soft skills, and self-development. If you're interested in topics like that, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. If you're an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm delighted to have you here. Today's topic is something that was highly requested by a lot of you asking me to do a video about how to build up the confidence level. So this video is dedicated to those that have requested it, but also to everyone interested in how to become even more confident. When we look at someone who seems to be confident to us, we cannot necessarily pinpoint on one thing that we think makes them look confident. Is it the way they talk? Is it the way they stand? Is it the way they look that makes them look confident? Usually when asked about a person, do you think they're confident? You would say yes or no, based on your overall general impression, based on all three elements that I'll be talking about very shortly. The truth is, there's no one thing that makes a person look confident. It's the amalgam of all three elements, your body, your mind, as well as your looks, that coherently send the message that you are a confident person. Though some of us are born more confident than the other because of various reasons, our upbringing, the way our parents treated us, the way the society or the school or people around us treated us, that is true that we are influenced very much by our environment and therefore our confidence level can be different when we reach adulthood. But the good news is that we can train that, we can build up our confidence level, it just takes some more practice and knowledge on what to work on. So in today's video, I'll look at three elements individually in order to help you boost up your confidence level. First things first is the looks. I know that we have a lot of debate about whether we should judge a book by its cover or maybe that it's an old archaic understanding, but the truth is the first impression that anyone makes of on us is based on the seven seconds and usually that impression is mainly majorly influenced by the way they look so unfortunately for many of you that would like to you know not agree with this point it is the human nature that we judge the book by its cover but I would like to do a different kind of message here I want you to look the way you like I want to emphasize the word you like and not like the other people would like to see you. When you like what you see in the mirror, when you look in your own reflection and like what you see, your confidence level immediately goes up. I want to illustrate this point using the example of my daughter. She's only six years old, but when she gets to pick up her outfit early in the morning when going to school, when she loves the outfit, she just looks in herself in the mirror with so much admiration. And when she walks out of the door that day, she is so confident. On the other hand, when I make her wear something for a certain occasion because that's a dress code or maybe because I think she's going to look beautiful in it and I think, subjectively speaking, she does look beautiful in that outfit but she herself doesn't perceive it that way, she doesn't like it for some reason, then her confidence level is very much affected by it. She will not admire herself in the mirror regardless of what other people around her say or feel or um, compliment on her look. This is important even using the example of a small child as young as a six-year-old. When a person likes their own reflection in the mirror and that decision is made only by you, if you like what you see in the mirror, your confidence level for sure will be up. Try this test for yourself at home. You know, if this is a daytime and you're watching this video, you're still in your PJs, your hair is all up, you know, you're not feeling very much confident in that outfit. Just go take a shower, quickly change to a nice pair of jeans, a nice blouse or a white t-shirt, put your hair down or maybe do a nice bun, uh, do a little bit of makeup, add some perfume if you would like, and then just go up to the mirror and take a look at yourself and tell me in the comment section down below what happened to your confidence level once you did that. You will see that in less than 20 to 30 minutes, your confidence level went up from zero up to 100. I assure you. 
Now that we have mastered and understood that looks play a huge role in building up our confidence and the looks that matter to you, that you like to see in yourself, next thing we will be working on is our body. Working on the body takes a little bit more time than adjusting your look, but it's also very much doable and very much learnable. There are some universal body language postures that translate into confidence. Number one is to have open body posture. It means no slouching, no crossing of your arms, so your body should not be obstructed by anything. Your body should be open and visible to the person who is interacting with you. I've actually done a video on how to walk elegantly and confidently and a video on a good posture. If you haven't checked it out, I'll link it down below in the description box so you can check it out after watching this video. Number two is taking a power pose. That is slightly putting your feet apart for men that would be more than for women, but basically what it means, the more physical space you occupy, the more confident you feel internally and the more confident people perceive you. Again, this doesn't mean that you have to take it to an extreme, you know, stretching your legs way too apart will not make you look confident at all. Decency and modesty in everything that you do. Number three, maintaining eye contact is super important. It's important to look in people's eyes. The more you're able to maintain an eye contact, the more people perceive you to be confident in yourself. Actually, I've done two videos on body language tips and tricks. If you haven't checked them out, I'll link them down in the description box so you can watch them again after watching this video. These are useful tips to know in order to look more confident and trustworthy as a negotiator and as a speaker. Number four, and that's a universal sign of confidence and amicability is a smile. Make sure that you smile more often. The more you're able to smile to people, the more they'll feel like you're confident in yourself, you're approachable, you feel confident in yourself that you let other people come closer to you. Number five, pay attention to your hands. Your hands will reveal how you truly feel, even without saying a word. If you are cracking your knuckles, if you're biting your nails, if you're playing with your ring, it shows that you are not confident. If you're a lady, a small bag or a clutch can come handy to occupy your hands. You could just hold your clutch or your bag and therefore occupy your hands. If you're out and about socializing in perhaps a networking event, what you could do is you could pick a glass of something and place it in your left hand, therefore occupy your hand and feel a little bit more comfortable and confident. Now coming to the last, the third element for today's video and that is your mind. If we're looking at the way that I've been mentioning every single element, first we start with the look, then we looked at our body which is going to take a little bit more time preparing and the final is the mind. It will take a little bit even more time but it's also doable. What I mean by mind is actually your knowledge of things. It's important to make sure that you continue educating yourself even after graduating from school. That's probably why I actually launched this channel is I wanted to talk about things, topics that could be helpful for young adults and people after school in developing their personality in, you know, when embarking on a journey of self-development, things that they would need to know in order to be better prepared for life. The truth is, the more things you're aware of, the more confident and comfortable you feel in conversation with others. Self-education is a lifelong practice. Read the bestseller books, stay on top of the world news, learn about things that your friends, community, university, society talks about, so you're able also to contribute to the discussion. When you have no knowledge of what people are talking about, you naturally feel withdrawn from the conversation because you feel like you have nothing to say. And in order to have something to say, you need to be knowledgeable about all the things happening. Just a little bit of here and there is good to have to be able to maintain a small talk, to be able to have the conversation going on. To illustrate this point, I want to give you an example from my life. When I was in fifth and sixth grade, um, I was attending this art class and in this art class, my classmates were talking about a new book that I've never heard about and the, for the duration of an hour of the class, they kept on talking and discussing the book. I felt insecure, I felt uncomfortable to say the least. I was not able to say anything in this conversation because I had no clue of what they were talking about. 
I remember that feeling inside of me of not being able to contribute in any way and I never wanted to feel the same way again. Uh, and this was a mental note to my younger self and immediately when going home I asked my mom to purchase the book and actually I believe that a lot of you from my generation probably know this was the book that was being discussed was Harry Potter and Philosopher's Stone. It has just arrived to Azerbaijan and was only available in certain very few um, bookstores and so I asked my mom to get me one. She spent the whole evening searching for the book, eventually found one, brought home. I was ecstatic to say the least. I started reading the book. Long story short, for the next subsequent few years, all we could talk about was Harry Potter and I was always a part of the discussion. Sometimes we're able to find communities that are doing things that we already love. So we join this community of people and feel like we can join the discussion, we can contribute. But other times we need to explore uh, new fields of interest, perhaps that we're outside of the spectrum of our interests in order to be able to grow and in order to be able to contribute to more things. This is not about blending in in any way. This doesn't mean that you have to give up your own interests for sake of the interests of the people. It just means that in addition to your own interests, you start developing or start uh, exploring new possibilities, new knowledge, new uh, fields of interest for yourself and therefore growing as an individual and that's part of building up your confidence level. The more knowledge you have about things around you and around the world, the more confident you're going to feel in yourself and be able to join discussions and join communities. This means you start reading more books, you start listening to more podcasts, you start learning about things you never wanted to learn about. Just having a little bit of knowledge will never hurt. So to sum up today's video, it's not about just how you look, it's not about just how you walk or talk, it's not just about what you have to say, but it's amalgam of all three elements that make you be confident and look confident. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. If you're still with me, I want to make an announcement that I've launched a Patreon page where my patrons can access exclusive videos on etiquette lessons from different movies. In the beginning of the month, I make an announcement about the movie that we're watching and at the end of the month, I make a video where I decipher and learn and teach you different etiquette lessons and mistakes in that particular movie. I've done already a video on etiquette lessons in Grace of Monaco. If you're interested to join our etiquette movie club, please make sure to check out the Patreon page link and become one of my patrons. And I will see you in my next videos. Bye! Oh,